So you, what you'll find is you'll, your immune system will be much more robust. You're much less likely to get crook. Uh, you'll recover better between training because at a cellular level, you're functioning better. Um, mentally, you'll be sharper. Definitely in that case. Sleep cycles are always better when, you, when your system's clean. So you're basically cleaning your body out. It's said that our, we take about 30% of our daily energy spent on digestion. And so when you have a rest from that for a while, you, it's like your body, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a service and tune of your car, you know? <laughs> All right, so I've just had some serious trying to find a park rage. I'm, back, I'm here in South Melbourne, just parked the car, I'm late for an appointment. And really, essentially what I want to do is bring you along on a little visit. I've decided to do a five day fast. Now, initially, I was planning on doing a water fast, but I've spoken with an expert, his name's Tim. I'm about to introduce you to him. And he's suggesting you get the same benefits out of doing a juice fast. So it looks like that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna have a chat with him now about it. The reason why I'm gonna do it is one, a five day fast apparently is very good for cleansing your whole body, your mind, get yourself laser sharp focus. A lot of my subscribers will know that I'm planning on a big block of training to win an A grade criterium. But in addition, it's very, very good for strengthening your immune system. Now in the past, when I've done these big block blocks of training, got kids, got a busy lifestyle, got a job. When you start training really hard, your immune system really starts to lower and you're susceptible to catching something. Now if I catch something and I'm out of action for a week or two or three whilst training to try and achieve this goal, that could be a major hindrance. So going through this process of getting clarity in my body, strengthening my immune system could be instrumental to helping me achieve this goal. So I'm gonna go have a chat with Tim now and he's gonna walk me through the process of what this five day juice fast looks like. So Tim, do you want to just tell us a little bit about who you are and yep. how you got into fasting? Yep, well I was, um, I got into it many, many years ago, back in the mid 90s. Yep. I was a, um, like yourself, I was, um, I don't know if you call it the word for it, an athlete, I was a paddler. So I paddled, I grew up in life saving and then paddled kayaks. And I was training in the late 80s, early 90s, I was training full time with the I2 national team selection and Olympic selection and what have you. And I started, I got crook. And first things were around 88, the winter of 88, and then it started to get sort of, it went away and then it started to get progressively work, worse over a period of time. And I got, what I understand now what was what I dealt with was what we would call chronic fatigue syndrome now. But in those days, they really didn't know it, much about it. And I'd been sent to umpteen doctors, you know, because I was in VIS and AIS and stuff like that, I'd been sent to all sorts of doctors and they'd all say, well, there's nothing wrong because nothing was coming up. And then um, got that, bad in the end i went up north thinking that would make a difference and it got that bad in the end that i i kept trying to train through it and that just kept pushing that sort of pushing it and it was not working very well and so i surrendered and stopped training and came back to melbourne and um because i went up north thinking the warm weather might make it better but it didn't and came back to melbourne and didn't or couldn't exercise it got to the point in the end where i was working because i had a mortgage and um and I just, I'd get dizzy. I'd walk after I walk up the street and I'd get dizzy. And I was always tired and I was always crook. So I understand now I had chronic fatigue syndrome. The doctors couldn't help. I, I was lucky to get a doctor who in the end said, I know what you're dealing with and I can't help you. You just have to rest and it'll, hopefully it'll get better. And it, it didn't. And then I was lucky to f stumble into a, a Russian, courtesy of an old coach, a Russian doctor who was brought out to Australia on a scientific exchange with the, via the CSIRO. He was a, he's a research biochemist and a doctor of medicine in Russia. And he'd researched all sorts of natural medicine techniques and medicine techniques in Russia. And then he was a, practicing as a, a 
a practitioner of medicine in Russia and he made a decision at one stage to walk away from using any pharmaceuticals in his treatments and only use natural medicines and natural medicine techniques. And he then came to Australia on this is scientific exchange and stayed here and he practices now as a, I guess, a natural medicine practitioner. And he's very well known for chronic illness and his name's Dr. Sultanov. He works downstairs here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so he works a lot with the chronic illnesses. Yeah. And, and with me, he, um, I went and saw him um, and fasting was part of the treatment. Not initially, I had to, he worked, he built me up into it, but it was the, the last part of that treatment. And the treatment involved a lot of other things like herbs that I prepared each day. And what I understand is blood cleansing right over bath and I have to increase the temperature of the bath um, while I was in it and then get out and wrap myself up and in a heated room and sweat basically for 45 minutes, like kind of like sauna therapy. And then, um, and then I did a fast for two weeks or 16 days. So I was, that was a water, as much water as I wanted and, and a couple of small juices a day. And pretty much that was it, yeah. And- What do you mean that was it? How did you feel after that? Well, the first five days were tough. Yeah. Because, well, look, I'd never seen, I'd never, I mean, I'd heard of it, I guess, but I'd never really, it was really not, was not very, certainly not accepted in the Western world now, like it started to become a lot more popular. In those days, people, when I told people this is what I was, had been told to do, they were like, that's ridiculous, it's dangerous. And I, the first five days were tough, partly because part of it was fear. Um, and I got to about day 10 and I, I started to feel better than I ever felt in my life. And after I, and I, and I actually said, I want to keep going. And he said, no, 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 no. We're shutting you down at two yeah. weeks. And so, and then the reintroduction of a food program was probably about four weeks. And so he's very, very thorough on how you reintroduce food. So the program is, you know, was amazingly thorough. And I look at now the Western fast that I've seen and his programs are, are more thorough. They also involved enemas. Basically the idea there was to clean the other end as well as, you know, if you stop supply at this end, you've got to clean the other end. Otherwise, you know, if you're going to be thorough about it, a lot of people are spooked by that initially, but once you do it, it's actually, it's no fuss, it's nothing. You self-administer, it's nothing. So I did all of that and I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life. Um, not only was I, did I feel better, but I felt better clarity, better, um, my mental focus was amazing. It was like, my, my, my mind was like a laser. It was amazing. How long have you been now coaching people through fasting? 18 years, 18 maybe years. 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And for, for somebody like me, I obviously yep. don't have chronic fatigue, slightly yep. different situation. Yep. I'm looking to set a foundation yep. um, in order to take my training to the next level. Through fasting, what, what, what are some of the things I can expect to achieve? Well, you know, the same principles apply when treating chronic illness. You're trying to take them out of that. But the same principles apply when you're getting a person who's apparently normal health, which I wouldn't most, what we accept as normal health, I wouldn't call ideal. Um, but what we're looking to do, it's the same process, but we're taking you exploring optimal. And most people don't touch on that very much. What you'll expect um, in terms of results from experience uh, will be, um, once again, better energy levels. Given the training program you're, on, you're going to go through, you're going to push your body pretty hard, particularly when you're combining work, family life, and training solidly. You, you live on the edge immune system-wise, and anyone who trains pretty solidly knows that. You've got to be, you know, you've got to look after yourself because you can get crook. So you, what you'll find is your, your immune system will be much more robust. You're much less likely to get crook. Uh, you'll recover better between training because at a cellular level, you're functioning better. Um, mentally, you'll be sharper. Definitely that case. Sleep cycles are always better when, you, when your system's clean. So you're basically cleaning your body out. It's said that our, we take about 30% of our daily energy spent on digestion. And so when you have a rest from that for a while, you, it's like your body... It's like a, it's like a, a, a service and tune of your car, you know? Yeah. You, you, the car functions better. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. We just don't do that to our bodies as much. Yeah. So when I first contacted you, I was yeah. talking about a, a water fast, five day yeah. water fast, but you said actually we wouldn't recommend that 
and you get the same physiological benefits out of a, out of a juice fast. So do you, yeah. can you just briefly explain that? Oh, well, it depends on the situation. Okay. It depends. It, it, for where you're at, there's no, there's no, there's not necessarily added benefit for you. If you're a person coming to me with really chronic illness, right. um, then we might go, okay, we need a deeper level of cleanse. But that's, you know, what you do within the scope of that fast is also a lot more restricted. So a water fast, you, you know, you, it's a lot harder to, like every time I've done a fast, a two week fast, and the first fast I did was a, 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 a fast with a couple of juices a day, like what you're gonna do, I was able to, well, what I was doing for work then was, I was able to work through it. Mm. You know, it wasn't physical work, so I was able to continue working, and I've done five or six extended fasts since, and I've able to been able to work right through, I've been able to do mild exercise right through, no going for a run, no doing weights, no high intensity stuff, but a good walk each day, we just did some tests. Yeah. Um, so do you want to just walk us through why, why we did those tests? Okay. And then the and then the process that I'm going to go through. High level. I'm conscious that you're going to write a proper detailed program for me. But just high yep. level. What's going to, what I'm going to be doing over okay. the next five days, and then that sort of reintroduction process. Yep. So in the lead up, we do. I I monitor with bioimpedance testing, which is technology that comes from hospitals. It's used in hospitals um, with pediatrics and with patient people patients who are bedridden long term and it measures changes in their body composition but we can also get measurements for um, cellular health level of toxicity or inflammation in your system um, efficiency that cells produce energy and there's a theoretical measure for biological age which is always an interesting one so i use this testing a lot for weight loss but we also use it in detox programs and cleanse programs like fasting if it was a person because i know you've got a history in sport then I, I'm not, if it was a person who came to me off the street and, and they're not really active, then I would also do things like blood testing and I might send them to the doctor for full bloods prior. But a lot of time if they're sick, they'd come to me. I've got a lot of that anyway. But in your case, um, I haven't done all of that because you would have fallen over in your training anyway in the sense that that would have tripped you up if it was a problem. Yeah. So um, we're using the bioimpedance it's, um, it just gives really good information and it gives you an idea of what's going on with your body. And the sort of, when you start to clean out, and what we find when your extracellular water levels drop, which I'll go into later, um, there, that corresponds with the time you start to feel really good. So I've monitored people on extended fasts and watched the changes in their body. And there seems to be a pattern whereby, yeah, when, when the level of toxicity reduces from the test, there is corresponds with when you feel good. And that for some person might be right at the start of the fast and for and go right through. And other people might feel like shite for a fair while or for a few days and then feel good. So it, everyone's different. Mm. And so that's what the testing it's um we use it in clinic. Yeah, I've I've found it really effective. Okay. But it's good objective measurement. Yeah. And then so the process that I'm gonna go through this five days, yep. what, what at a high level, what, what does that look like? I mean, okay. You mentioned enemas before, which has got me a little bit. Concerned. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I, I will say this if we're on camera now that yeah. most people freak about that, but, and that's, but I actually think it's really, really important, and I know from the Russian research, um, that's one of the, that's very, very important. The idea behind it is that if you've, as I mentioned before, you're, you're, you're stopping intake of food, so your body's going to start eating your own stores, and we don't want it to be then trying to access stores of say so things lining my my bowel for example you know so if i've got you might have it you know accumulate a bit of debris and that and so if we can clean you at both ends then you're going to function better and I've, i have read and heard stuff where people who don't do that process might have diarrhea and stuff after a few days whereas you don't get that with the enema process because we're cleaning your gut out it i think the thing with enemas is, is that particularly with blokes it's um it's more a mental thing. Once you've done it once, you go, oh, what was all the fuss about? That was yeah. the first, when I first got told it, it's like, right, first you're telling me I can't eat for two weeks. Yeah. Now you're telling me I've got to do, this, yeah. I've got to put this tube in, and I was just like, are you crazy? Yeah. And then I went and did it and was like, oh, it's, nothing. it's nothing. And I felt really clean. Yeah. But you've got to be careful how you do it. Same with fasting. You've got to do it properly. There's a lot of programs out there online that, can be good, but they can also be hit and miss. Mm. And so we, that's why we do it supervised. Yeah, okay. 
and day to day is, is two juices a day. Is that right? Two juices a day, similar program each day. You can have a couple of herbal teas a day, okay. and you can have as much water as you want. Mm. Similar program each day. We lead in the night before, so meal no later than seven p.m. the day before, and each day is pretty similar. Yeah. And then, and then, so that'll be five days for you, and then we'll roll you out. The other part that I think that needs work in a lot of the programs I've seen, you know, that from you know the West, so to speak, those programs is the reintroduction of food is as important as the fast. If you rush that, you can mess the whole process up. For for example, you can create a blood sugar level issue, you know, by introducing sugars too quickly. But your gut, you've given your gut a rest, your stomach will shrink and it will become quite sensitive. So reintroducing food slowly is really important. And everyone's in a hurry when they, when they finish their fast, they want to get onto, oh, I remember eating that one. You know, no, nah, you've got to take your time. So we'll have a, it'll be a 10 day reintroduction right. before you ate what I would consider, what you might consider eating normally. So what would, I know we talked about this just before those first few days of coming out of the fast. Yep. It's broth. And You're not eating chewables for yeah. about three days, four days. Yeah. So the first days of broth and you throw away the veggies and you're just having the, the broth, but you're having, you know, two litres of broth a day, so 200 mils 10 times. Second day is a juice, same deal, um, just having a lot more juice. And then you go into a really dilute sort of porridgey type thing with, yeah. um, and it's got a few other veggies and things like that and herbs to stimulate digestion and stimulate your bowel function and your gut function again. And how are we going to work together? So this is this is my first session. Yeah. Um, you're going to put a program together, then I start the yep. fast, say late, I'm probably hopefully yep. late next week. How do we sort of work with each other? Yeah, you'll be able to start it by the time you need to. So you'll have yep. a program within a day or two. Yep. It's the process that we do is, you know, obviously when you came in, there are questions I will ask about your health and where you're at, mm -hmm. how, what your history particularly. Um, and then we work out a program, it depends on the type of time of year, what you know, what comprises your juices, then I'll give you a program um, and then it will include everything, your introduction to food, everything you do at each, you know, there are certain times of the days you do certain things. And so we'll give you the whole program yep. and that fits around your lifestyle and around where you're at. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and work and so we'll catch up first session, we'll catch up probably either during the fast or just before you finish the fast. Okay. So probably day four yep. to work through your reintroduction to food. Yep. Um, and if it can't be done in person, we can do it online. Yep. So that, that phase definitely. Okay. Um, be good to do a bioimpedance test there, which will need to be in person. Yep. Then we'll do another test at the end of a week of reintroduction and then probably another one after, you know, you could do a test another week after that or you can make it two or three weeks after that. Yeah, okay. um, or a couple of weeks after and just to see like last time I fasted, I lost 10 kilos. Uh, I was reasonably lean already, mm. a little bit to lose, but uh, I lost 10 kilos and of that, it was about same amounts of water, muscle and fat. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, in, in, in losing that much muscle, it took me, I can, I can base it with my exercise, I paddle with a squat on the river, mm. and it took me about two months, take two months to three months after the fast to get back to being where I was before, maybe a couple of months. Because I dropped muscle, I was, you know, I dropped a bit of speed. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, but it, after a couple of months, I was fine and um, my system was f working so much better. It was, <laughs> it was worth doing it yeah. for, a, for a bit of short-term um, drop in, you know, performance. muscle mass performance. Yeah. You, I mean, this is not something you do in the in the weeks leading up to a major event. No, of course not. And that's why I'm doing it. This is part of the process of setting the foundation yeah. before I start training yeah. really heavily. Intermittent well, fasting is a completely different subject because yeah. you're not going extended periods. You're not going, and I don't do any intermittent fast that's longer than 36 hours. Yeah. So that's for cleansing and it's for other purposes. But for a longer fast there, it's probably, the I would say, the most thorough version of a detox you could ever do, yeah. without a doubt. But it's um, or a cleanse that you could do. It's like giving your body a restart. Yeah. But you just need to pick the time. Yeah. So when you're in base training, it's a great time.